Hello, in this video we're going to have a, a last look at uh, sequences and we're going to have a look at recurrence relationships between consecutive terms in the sequence. So we're going to get something like uh, an n plus oneth term in the sequence we're going to have some relationship between that value and the term before, so un. So there needs to be a connection between the n plus oneth term and the nth term in the sequence. I'm also going to need to know one of the terms in the sequence. In this case we've been given the first term. So if I've got one of the terms and I've got the relationship between consecutive terms then I can generate all terms in the sequence. So it might be quite simple like this one we've got here which is an arithmetic progression. It might be a geometric progression um, or it might be mu a much more complicated relationship between this un plus one and un. As long as I know what that relationship is between each of the terms and I've got one of the values of the term in the sequence then I can generate all of the terms. Let's have a look at this one. So we've got un plus 1 is equal to un plus 3 value of the first term is equal to 5. So u1 is 5 u2 is going to be equal to u value before so u1 plus 3. So u1 plus 3, well u1 is equal to 5 so this is equal to 5 plus 3 which is equal to 8. The third term in the sequence is going to be equal to the second term in the sequence plus 3. Well, u2 we've just worked out is 8, so this is equal to 8 plus 3, which is equal to 11. Uh, fourth term in the sequence is equal to third term in the sequence, so u4 is equal to u3 plus 3. So this is going to be equal to u3, we've just worked out is 11. 11 plus 3 is equal to 14. So we've got the first four terms, we've got 5, 8, 11 and 14. We've actually got an arithmetic sequence, so the starting value is equal to u1, which is my value 5. My common difference is 8 to 11, 11 to 14, adding 3 in each case. Uh, that comes out of my occurrence relationship here, so I'm adding 3 to get from the one term onto the next term, 3, adding another 3, adding another 3, so my common difference is equals plus 3. Uh, let's have a look at another example. Uh, so in this case we've got a sequence, u1, up to, uh, u3 and so on. Uh, we've got this first value in the sequence. So remember I need to know one of the values, often it will be u1, sometimes they might make the question a little bit more difficult and give you u4 or something. Um, we've got the relationship between un plus 1, it's 0 0.9 times un, the previous term in the sequence. Uh, we've been asked to work out the value of u4, well, we've got u1, we're going to need to work out the values of u2 and u3 before we can get to u4. So u1 is equal to 10 u2 is going to be equal to 0 0.9 times u1 well, that's going to be 0 0.9 times u1 which is equal to 10 so 0 0.9 times 10 is 9 my second value my third value is going to be equal to 0 0.9 times u2 the term before, well u2 we've just worked out is 9 so this is equal to 0 0.9 times 9 which is equal to 8.1 that's my u3 and u4 the value that we're looking for is equal to 0 0.9 times u3 and 0 0.9 times 8.1 and you can't do that in your head but do it in your calculator uh, 7.29 so we've got the value of the fourth term in the sequence uh, 7.29 uh, this time we've got a geometric sequence. So we started off at 10. We've got u1, it's right there on the top. That's equal to 10. We've got 10, 9, 8.1, 7.29. So our starting value A is equal to 10. The common ratio is equal to 0 0.9. So 10 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. And we're getting that from this multiplier in front of un. So each time to calculate the next term, we're multiplying the previous term by 0 0.9. So a geometric uh, sequence, first value is 10, common ratio 0 0.9. So we can then um, work out part B. 
So we're looking for the sum to infinity of our term. Uh, our terms are each getting smaller, so 8.1, 7.29, it's a converging sequence, so we can work out the sum to infinity. Remember, sum to infinity is equal to starting value divided by 1 minus the common ratio. My starting value A is equal to 10, and I divide it by 1 minus my common ratio, which is 0 0.9. So I've got 10 divided by 0 0.1 and that's equal to 100. So my sum to infinity is equal to 100. So if I add up all of those numbers through to infinity, I get to the value of 100. Uh, one more example. Um, this one's a bit more complicated. This one is in the textbook. You can have a look in, in there as well if you want to. Um, uh, we need a bit of problem solving skills to get to the bottom of this one. We've got a much more complicated relationship between n plus 1 and n. We're squaring our previous term and then subtracting one. So it's not going to be arithmetic, it's not geometric, uh, it's going to be more complicated, but we know the relationship between consecutive terms, we know the starting value in the sequence, so we can generate all the terms. So first things first, part A, we've been asked to work out uh, to show that A3 is equal to P to the power of 4 and subtract 2 lots of P squared. Well A3, we know what A1 is, uh, we're going to need A2 first. So A2 is going to be equal to uh, A1 squared minus 1. Uh, A1, well we know what that is, that's P. So this is equal to P squared minus 1. So the second value in the sequence, P squared minus 1. Uh, A3, which is the one we're trying to calculate, that's going to be equal to A2 squared take away 1. Well, A2 we've just calculated is P squared minus 1. So this is equal to P squared minus 1 all squared minus 1. So I've substituted P squared minus 1 in for my value of A2. So A2 is P squared minus 1. I'm squaring it and then I'm subtracting 1. And that's my value A3. Well, I can expand my brackets. I get P4 minus 2P squared plus 1 minus 1 and that's equal to p4 minus 2p squared just like we were looking for. Okay, uh, part b. Given that a2 is equal to 0, find the value of p. Well we've worked out what a2 is. a2 is p squared minus 1. So p squared minus 1 is equal to 0. p is going to be equal to plus or minus 1. We've been told in the question that p is less than 0, so p is equal to negative 1 as p is less than 0. Remember, always give your explanation as to why you've discounted uh, both your solutions. You need to write both your solutions down, you need to discount one of them. The uh, reason why we've been given p is less than 0 in the question, so p equals negative 1. So we've done part b. Uh, part c. Find the sum from r equals 1 to 200 of the sequence AR. This is going to be really tricky. So it's not arithmetic, it's not geometric, so we don't know what the formula is for the sum to 200 of each of those terms. What we're going to need to do is write down the terms that we've got and hope that that is going to give us a clue. So first of all, A1 is equal to uh, P, which we know is negative 1. Uh, we know that A2 is equal to 0, so we can write that down, A2 equals 0. And A3 with a recurrence relationship, so A3 is equal to A2, which is 0, subtract 1. So A3 is equal to negative 1. Uh, A4 is going to be negative 1 squared, which is 1, take away 1, 0. So hopefully we can see the pattern starting to emerge. We've got negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Next term would be negative 1, then 0, negative 1, and then 0. So if I've got 200 terms, I'm going to get 100 negative 1s, and I'm going to get 100 zeros. So 100 lots of 0, that's still 0. And I'm going to get 100 lots of negative 1. So this is going to be equal to negative 100. 
So if you've got a complicated sum, it's not arithmetic, it's not geometric, you can't use your formulae, write your terms out, try and spot a pattern, and then you're going to have to use some logic to work out what that sum's going to be. Uh, final part of the question, uh, part D, it says write down the value of A199. Well, go back to your sequence, have a look, see what's going on. At the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh values are all negative one. So my odd terms are all negative one. My even terms, two, four, six, eight, are all zero. 199 is odd. It's going to have the value negative one. So the value of the 199th term of the sequence is going to have a value negative one. Okay, time for you to get some practice. I want you to have a go at exercise 3G on page 80. Uh, all of the questions, it's a pretty short exercise. It shouldn't take you too long. So have a go at that and then come back to the video.